Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today I'm here for a video on my tier list of all characters in My Hero Wants Justice 2. Now, quick mention at the beginning of the video, um, this tier list is going to be based on characters as the playable characters, so how they play on their own, so not as supports or in teams. It's just based on their, their own moveset and how I feel they place against each other. Um, and also, as you can see on the side here, I haven't gone down to D tier like most tier lists, because I strongly believe that there are actually no characters in this game that are weak or underpowered or hard to use. A lot of the time, if you know your combos and you have a basic idea of how fighting games work, it's pretty easy to use any character in this game and be effective in using them in some way. Just some characters are more overpowered or cheap than others, so let's get into this. So starting off with 100% Deku, I don't think anyone's going to question me putting him in S plus tier. People are complaining about him constantly in comment sections anywhere, people always use him online, and it's for a good reason. He's super strong, he does huge damage, he has really easy combos that do a lot of damage, but you can also opt to do um, more advanced combos that do ridiculous damage. Almost all of his quirk buttons, oh yeah, no, all of his quirk buttons are amazing tools, he has a rapid punch move, he has a really quick projectiles, he is a slow moving huge projectile that does so much damage. His his grab is great, his red attack, his tilt quirk 2 grab is amazing, and he has like a free combo loop with his yellow attack. He's just overall obviously an overpowered <laughs> character. His only weakness would be maybe that um, his some of his regular attacks are a bit slow and have um, quite a bit of a recovery, but other than that Everything is about him is overpowered. His um, unblockable attack, his guard attack, is ridiculous. Like, it just covers the entire screen. There's just nothing about this character that is weak. Even the slight weaknesses of his slow regular attacks do not account for his amazing strengths. He's just too good of a character to, <laughs> to not put in S tier. S plus tier. Okay, next with Aizawa. Now, Aizawa's an interesting one. And something that I also want to mention is that um, a lot of people I see, when we're talking about how strong characters are, they compare them to One's Justice 1 and say, oh, they're better than worse, or like someone like Ura Raka, people are saying, oh, she's so bad compared to One's Justice 1, she can't do this, can't do that. But a lot of characters have become better and worse, and not to mention that the game has also changed its fundament fundamental mechanics quite a bit since One's Justice 1, and that does affect the um, characters' rankings in comparison to each other and how they do. So, like... D you know, with the new systems, like the different breakers and how the sidesteps change the footsie game a lot, and yeah. But, talking about Aizawa now. Aizawa, I think, is definitely S tier. He has huge damage combos, like almost 11,000 damage uh, for zero dash cancels, <laughs> might I say. So huge damage, no meter, and they're also very easy combos, and they're off of his regular attack string, so his risk reward in in terms of combos is like just all reward. You go for a super easy combo and you get 11,000 da damage and you didn't do a single dash cancel. It's just ridiculous. Um, I'd say his only weakness is that he like he has good mix-ups with his um, tilt quirk to red attack, his grabs, and his scarf attack is really good at grabbing people from a mid-range. But I'd say his only weakness is he doesn't really have an F neutral move where like if you're far away or someone's trying to zone you out, he doesn't really have any anti-zoning cap um, like strengths. He doesn't have anything that launches himself in or launches a projectile, but. If he gets in, he's an extremely strong character, so it doesn't take away from him too much, and I think he's, yeah, still an insanely strong character. So he deserves his spot in S tier. Okay, now for All Might. All Might, I think, I'm sorry All Might fans, but I think he's A plus tier. He's still really good, he has a lot of great tools, he, um, he has pretty high decent damage combos, he, unlike Aizawa, he does need a dash cancel for them all. Um, he has um, multiple red attacks, his tilt quirk 2 and his air tilt quirk 2 are really good grabs, like in the air version leads to a full combo, so you can use that to extend combos, or just in mix-ups as well, it's really good if you do a dash cancel into his tilt quirk 2, it mixes people up all the time, it almost has a 100% success rate. Um, and other besides him being a up-close brawler character, 
with his grabs and good pressure and stuff. He also has pretty good anti-zoning capabilities. So he has his um, Quirk 1 projectile, which doesn't reach very far, but if he dash cancels, it becomes plus on block. And also, if someone is trying to um, zone him out, he has his Tilt Quirk 1, which is immune to projectile. So he has an answer for a lot of situations. I'd say the only thing really um, holding his back, he's, he just doesn't have anything like crazy overpowered like a lot of the characters in S plus or S tier do. He does like average damage, maybe slightly above, but I think it's about average. Maybe, oh, maybe a bit below. I'll say average. <laughs> but yeah, I think he's He's a good example of a balanced and fair character. You, when you play against him, you don't feel like the opponent's cheesing you out. And yeah, I think he has he's fun to play and not crazy annoying to fight against. So I think that's a good placing for a character like that. Okay, all for one. Now, this is also an interesting one because I think he's actually A tier. He, on paper, he has good moves. And I'm also by the way, going to be ranking characters on, like, their combos, their, like, overall gameplay and how interesting they are, how, like, OP they are, like, all kinds of things. I think All For One is... He has good moves. He has the yellow rapid punch attack. He has... I think the best thing about him is definitely his projectiles. He's a very good zoner if you want to play him that way, with his, like, massive charge projectile or his really fast, um... Uh, primary charge projectile if you don't charge it twice with his quirk one but yeah he's pretty strong and he has that um move where he teleports the opponent to him which they have to be in the air to avoid or like sidestep and he gets a combo off of that if they don't know how to just guard and so playing against um all for one he's one of those characters that is or at least for me, I find really annoying to play against because he does a few hits into like plus ultra one all the time or uses that red attack and like zones you out and so he's really annoying to fight against but he he's a very boring character i'm sorry to say he's not that great you can do interesting combos obviously you can check out my combo guide <coughs> but i think he's a, um a boring character and he doesn't have any uh, great fundamentals like his combos do average damage and i think he's like He's no fun to play, he's no fun to play against, and I know that's not how you should do a, a tier list, but he's just not that great of a character, and if you know how to counter zone pretty well and like run at the right angle and sidestep and stuff, he's not that tough to um, counter. Um, and depending on your character, he can be zoned out as long as you are being wary of his charged projectile, that's his main strength. Um, oh. Yeah, because he does have that... Um, charge tilt quirk 2 which reaches really far and is a grab i think he's either an a plus tier or a he's not an a, like crazy s plus tier i think i'll put him in a tier i'll be kind he he does have good moves but what's holding him back is he's he's just so boring i don't know his his combos and stuff like he wants to zone and do boring combos and yeah okay Ooh, another interesting one okay bakugo so um, before making this, I've checked out a few tier list videos, and a lot of people are putting Bakugo in, like, S triple plus, like, top tier character. And, uh, um, <laughs> which really changed my mind. I was gonna put him in, like, A or A plus tier, so I'll take into account that other people think he's really strong, and I understand why. He has a really fast run speed, he has really fast moves, and he's really good fundamental buttons. Um, the thing is, his combos can be a little bit difficult to pull off. He, uh, they're... They, um, if you want to do an advanced combo that does above average damage, they can be pretty um, hard to get online unless you've labbed them quite a bit. But he does have simple combos which do a little bit below average damage, and they're very easy to get. So I feel like he's a really good um, character for all levels, and you can really adjust to how you want to play. If you want to play like easily and guaranteed, or if you want to be risky and do more damage. But obviously, other than that, he has really good buttons with his Tilt Quirk 1, is like a really fast projectile kind of like poke projectile control the neutral move because there's no risk to him doing it it's not very um punishable even on whiff it's not um it's pretty hard to punish so yeah and he has his grab he has a lot of combo moves and he's very <laughs> i'm sure if you fought against a um a bakugo online he's very masher friendly a lot of bakugos they just press so many buttons and it works out for him he has fast quirk buttons and he just has a lot of priority over other characters which makes him seem like he would be s plus tier but i'm gonna put him in s tier because i still think he's really really strong 
but he doesn't have the overpowered, ridiculous, annoying factor like some other S tier S plus characters. Okay, Kami. Oops, I have two things for Kami, but Kami is also gonna go in S tier, and I'm sorry for everyone that has been putting her in S plus tier, but I think she's just S tier. She, I obviously she has ridiculously great combos with her quirk two string. Um, being like a wall splat on the floor can be used to extend at any point in a combo to as a meterless extender and she has actually multiple meterless extenders like if you jump in the air and do two hits into her armor attack from the air and then into tilt quirk one which is like summons a fake support that's a combo extender so she can get combos off of that her to quirk two string is a combo extender she just has a lot of things that she can use to get a ton of damage, and she's also work works really well with supports. So like a single support in a combo, zero dash cancels, is like guaranteed 12,000 damage. Which is pretty ridiculous, see like, obviously Kami in this game is a combo heavy character, and her main weakness is that she um, can't really zone people out, but I don't think she is really that weak in zoning out, because her tilt quirk 1 is actually really good for um you know, like poking and footsing at the opponent when you're in neutral and in the mid-range, because if they run into it, then you get a combo, and they just always have to be scared of that thing that you can pull out really quickly. Um, but yeah, she's a bit weak against zoning, but um, but she has really great combos. And her, um, I forgot to mention, her regular attack string, despite only being two buttons and like quite short, it is one of the, I think it might even be the fastest attack string in the game, it's crazy ridiculous. I don't know how many frames it is, because games like um, 3D fighters, anime games, don't usually have um, frame data uh, easily accessible, and I don't want to <laughs> capture 60 frame per second footage and tell you how many frames each move is, but she has a crazy fast attack string. It does reach a little bit, um, it doesn't have as much reach as some other attack strings, which is also one of her weaknesses, but she's, when she's up close, she's very scary, and she, if she gets a hit, you better use your support to break the combo, or else you're losing, like, half your life. Okay, I'll put this other Kami, um, photo down the back. Okay, now Darby. Darby, hoo hoo hoo. Um, I'm going to say a plus tier. Now, hear me out. I know he can be really strong in the right hands, but that's the thing. I think any character in this game can be really strong in the right hands. And Darby, I feel like, is one of those characters that is actually quite. He's easy to play, um, to win. To a lot of people just like zone him out, like throw projectiles and do annoying stuff, and people are always complaining about complaining about Darby's online, you know, just spam a Darby's. <laughs> but I think to play him effectively and um, correct at a higher level um, is actually quite difficult. And to, he's so he's easy to play basically and zone people out, but to actually play him efficiently and do his advanced combos and really use his setup tools effectively, because all of his quirk buttons are set up in some way, and in order to use that vast moveset, including including his um, yellow attack as well, is a setup, it puts stuff on the screen that stays there for a bit, and order, in order to use that really amazing moveset effectively is really hard, I've found. And you don't find many good Darby players that actually use all of his tools effectively. But obviously he is a really good character because he has great zoning, great setups, <laughs> as he's a setup character. Um, but yeah, I think A plus is a good position for him. Okay, now, oh, base Deku. Um, yeah, guys, S plus tier. This is my tier list, so I get to put <laughs> people wherever I want. But in my opinion, base Deku. So this is the regular Deku, not shoot style. Is one of the most overpowered characters in the game, simply because. Oh, by the way, these aren't um ordered in any way. I'm just putting characters into tiers. Um, base Deku is one of the best characters in the game. He is very basic, but effective, and overpowered, and cheesy, and ridiculous in a lot of ways. So he gets huge damage for, like, nothing. So he... So, a, like, a basic combo is about above average damage. Like, if you do two hits into an armor attack into Tilt Quirk 2 and dash cancel two hits into his Quirk 2, that combo there does, like, 10,000 and a bit damage, I think off the top of my head, which is a lot of damage for such an easy combo, like two hits into a yellow attack and then, you know, do a dash cancel into two hits into an attack. Like, super easy combo, 
but it does such huge damage, and it doesn't even Meteor Blow. And a lot of the time, because you end it in Quirk 2, which is that punch that launches the opponent so far away, you're really likely to get Wall Splats with um, um, regular Deku, and that's where he gets completely ridiculous. So after you've done your super annoyingly easy combo that is impossible to mess up, if you get a, a Wall Splat, then you like your combo instantly explodes into like sixteen thousand damage for no like added dash cancels just from doing like two hits into yellow tech into quirk two just on the wall. And if you add oh my god, you can check out my breakdown to see me show you all of this stuff by the way. But if you see, if you oh. If he gets a wall splat and he does his base like combo into that, and then he ends like with t uh, two hits into the um, yellow attack, um, his if he and uh, if he ends it in a plus ultra one, he gets I don't even know how much it is. I'm pretty sure it's like eighteen to twenty thousand damage for a single dash cancel and a single plus ultra combo. And not to mention, I haven't even started talking about his overpowered state, where after he does a plus ultra one, he goes into like spastic mode and he <laughs> has like the fastest buttons in the game. He does ridiculous damage. He does lose some life, which I think is a smart way of nerfing it. Like every button he presses takes some of his health, which I think is an interesting concept. I think it should be a bit a lit, little bit more, but he <laughs> He's so fast and he does such huge damage. Like you can do two hits. You can do if you do his regular combo in his like buffed state, it literally takes half of your life bar. So if he hits you with the plus ultra one and then does a combo, you're dead. <laughs> like he's so ridiculous and he's such like burst damage. Like yeah, he does have some weaknesses where like some of his projectiles aren't even that great. Wait, no, his projectiles are awesome. Like his charged quirk one. Like, a lot of the time, people just try to zone you out with his Quirk 1 projectile, so he certainly isn't weak in that realm. Maybe, like, just some of his buttons are slightly, slightly slow, like, especially not if, if you're in buffed state. But it, maybe his red attack. His red attack is the one non-good thing about him, but that does not hold him out of being S plus tier. He's pretty ridiculous. Okay, Endeavor is one that I've seen a lot of people putting in S plus tier, um, which I thought was interesting, because I didn't think it was that great. Um, mainly because a lot of the characters I play are good at anti-zoning, so I've, I had never really faced his, um, zoning. But when I started playing characters that, um, like, and I was going through all the roster and have done breakdowns and gameplay for all the characters, I realized for characters like, um, maybe like Tsuyu, or some characters that don't do as well against zoning, um... Yeah, he can be pretty annoying. Even with Sue, though, I was able to deal with it, so I don't think his zoning is actually that overpowered. I don't know why people complain about him so much. Maybe it's just the endeavors that I've fought against online, but I really don't think he's that great. He is very good, of course. Like, I've, I have played with him quite a bit. Um, obviously, he has a nice butt. Let's skip over that. <laughs> but yeah, he has great projectiles. Yeah, very good screen control with his Quirk 1 projectile that, like, is a shotgun fireball and his fast spear projectile. But other than that, I feel like his combo damage is definitely, like, definitely, definitely below average damage. Unless you do some, like, really advanced things, like, depending on where the wall is. So he can get good damage, but it's a lot less unreliable than other characters. So his combos are a bit below average damage. He has good zoning. Um, his buttons is also something that holds him back. He has really slow um, regular attacks, which holds him back quite a bit. Um, but he does have all... <laughs> adding to his pluses, he does have really good yellow attacks on the air and in the ground. And his red attack is also really great. So I ha feel like he has a lot of really good things about him. But there's also just a few things that hold him back. Like he's a bit slow and he doesn't do that great damage. But I think he's a really great character and he deserves his spot in A plus tier. And by the way, guys, like going down this, these characters are still in A plus tier. They're still really good characters. And just because they're not as high as some of the others doesn't mean they're not, like, really strong to use. Oh, okay. Just as I say that, though, here comes Fat Gum, and I'm sorry, but he has to be A tier. He is... This is a hard one, because in regular form, he's not that great. I, w I think... So his combos in regular form are kind of bad, and you don't want to do a dash cancel, because... You want to go into his um, Slim Gum form from doing his Plus Ultra 2, because that's the easiest way to get it. Um, and in Slim Gum form, he is actually really strong. Like, if they were two different characters, I'd say Slim Gum is probably even S tier, because he has those crazy combo loops with his Tilt Quirk 1 um, kick string, because you can just dash or sidestep after it and get, like, free combo extensions from it, which is pretty ridiculous. But because you have to go through Fat Gum form first, that actually lowers him down quite a bit. And I think... 
one good way to buff Fat Gum would be to make his parry a lot better. Because his parry is... Oh, it's like, um... Night Eye version of, like, bad parry. It's, it's really slow to start up. It doesn't parry everything, which is weird. Like, some things don't count, because it's not actually a parry. So uh, what I'm, when I say parry, I mean his quirk one, where he, like, absorbs things, and he does take damage, I believe, which is kind of annoying. And But if he absorbs enough, he gets to turn into Slim Gum, which is really good, because you want to be Slim Gum because he's overpowered. But it's so slow on starting up his quirk one that, like, a lot of the time, if you react to, like, a projectile coming at you or something, you can't get it out in time. And it has really slow recovery, so, like, you can be punished for using it super easily, and I just feel like if you buffed that, like make it a lot faster and a lot um, safer, then he would actually be a pretty good character, because his meterless damage is pretty good, and you want to do meterless combos so that you can become Slim Gum. But yeah, that's what I have to say about Fat Gum. He does have some really good things, like his red attack's pretty good, and obviously Slim Gum is great, and he has that great red attack that charges at the opponent, and yeah, fun stuff in Slim Gum form. Okay, now Suyu... I think is solid A plus tier. Um, she has high damage. Oh, by the way, for this list, I'm adding in disclaimers throughout the whole video. I'm not counting any um, combo loops, like with characters that do like a sidestep, or with Froppy, who she can do like one hit into her yellow attack, and then one hit into the yellow attack, and she can loop that for a long time to get ridiculous damage. I'm not including those in the characters, because I don't like to use those. And insane people like me don't use those online, because we're kind people. <laughs> and they're clearly bugs and will be fixed in the coming patch, so I choose to ignore them. But other than that, Suyu still gets really, um, really great damage. She Her red attack is really fast, and it puts her in the air, and she has good damage from her air combos. Just regular combos, like a two hits into yellow attack, into till quirk one, and then dash cancel into the yellow attack, and blah 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 blah. She gets like solid 10,000 damage combos, which is really good. And she also has um um really interesting space control with her licks. So her quirk one and quirk two, including the air versions of them, are actually really good for controlling the space. Because they're surprisingly fast. When you're using Sue, they don't feel that quick when you press the button and then it comes out like it <laughs> feels like a second later but they hit the opponent like a surprising amount of time because you can't really tell that they're coming um so yeah they're very good tools and they do decent damage for um spacing tools like they take a big chunk of the opponent's health if they get nicked by one but yeah also her um charged quirk one where she goes invisible i feel is a very underrated tool people are like oh but she's not actually invisible like what's the point you can still see her that's not the point of the move the point is that it hides her, her glows. So, like, when you do a red attack, you go red. Like, that's the point of the red attack. And a yellow attack, you go yellow. But when she's invisible, she doesn't glow red or glow yellow. So she becomes a mix-up machine when she's in invisible form. So if you go invisible and you, like, um, press a few attacks and the opponent's blocking, if I go into my held tilt quirk 2, they can't tell that a red attack is coming out, because she doesn't go red, and all of a sudden they've just gotten hit and probably wall splat. The same goes if they just try to press buttons, they, they didn't realize that I'm actually doing my yellow attack, and then they're getting beaten. Like, she, <laughs> she's really strong when she's invisible, and I feel like the invisibility is a really underrated tool. Okay. Gang Orca. Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay, I'm sorry to say it. I kind of want to put him into A plus tier, because I really like playing him, but I think he's just A tier. So Gang Orca has... Really good quirk buttons. So his quirk one projectile, regularly it's like a short, quick projectile, which is pretty good for spacing. It's kind of like uh, Tsuyu's lick. Um, he can hold it down though, and it becomes a, um, a stun, like a combo extender move, which is really good. So if you hit, they hit them with that, then he gets a combo afterwards, and it tracks, and it goes really slow. And slow projectiles in any fighting game are really great because they enforce pressure. That and especially if it leads to a combo, it's super awesome. His tilt quirk 2 on the ground is really good, his quirk 2 is a good combo extender, and oh my god, his tilt quirk 1 is amazing, I love that move so much. So yeah, all of his quirk buttons, I really like, and I think they are really um, strong working together. He gets solid uh, 10, 11,000 damage combos, if you know how to do them. <laughs> Um, but his Tilt Quirk 1, the massive yellow attack with, like, the massive Sonic Scream, I, I love that move so much. It is so fun to use, and in the air as well. Um, so yeah, all of his Quirk buttons are really good, which maybe you wouldn't expect, seeing as he's, I put him in A tier. But his regular 
I, it's just something about the character, because all of his buttons are theoretically pretty good. Like, his red attack reaches far, and it's a combo extender, so that would be good. His plus ultra 1's really good, but for some reason, just... His moves don't really, um, like, flow together. Like, he doesn't seem like a coherent character. Like, some of his combos I feel kind of weird to do, and he doesn't really have, like, a flow like some of the other characters. And his, um, regular attack strings, a lot of the time they have really bad whiff issues. Whiff is just, like, fighting game term for miss. So, like, sometimes he'll attack above the opponent or below the opponent if he does a dash cancel. Sometimes they can just be walking sideways and he'll just miss his ground attack. And they're not that fast on their own, so that's something that really holds him back. But, yeah, I don't actually, um... I don't know exactly what it is, but he, he certainly isn't top tier like some other characters. Okay, let's skip Gran Torino and go into Ida. Ida, I feel like, is certainly S tier. He... Uh, he has just all the fundamentals that you would want in a character that has his playstyle of, like, rushdown, combo-heavy, pressure, uh, brawler character. He, um, he has really large damage combos. He can either have, like, a free 10,500 damage combo if the, um, depending on the connection or if the opponent doesn't recover in certain things. Some people say they're real. I've, um, some people say that they're fake combos, but I've personally never seen anyone escape his combos. And what I'm talking about is when you do, like, the few hits into his um, Tilt Quirk 2, and then into his Tilt Quirk 1, where he does, like, the weird cartwheel in the air. And then after that, you can just get hits after it, I've found. And a lot of the time, the opponent doesn't have time to recover. But obviously, if you do want to ensure that it's real, you can do a dash cancel. And he still, like, even if he, if he removed that, he still has really high damage combos. And his combos, on top of being really high damage, are very easy to go into a wall splat thanks to his Quirk 2, which is where he, like, jumps back and does a flying kick at the opponent. And it sends the opponent, like, flying across the screen, so you're almost guaranteed to get a wall splat if you're facing a wall from any distance. And that adds huge damage to his combos. And he has really good moves, um... Because he doesn't have any projectiles, but he does have really good moves for um, counter zoning. So his yellow attack has pretty decent range, and you can combo off of it. He has a really good sprint speed, obviously, seeing as his Ida. So he can just run around projectiles, you know, weave in and get in on the opponent. But also his Quark 2 is a really good move. To like, he, like if you see a slight gap in someone's zoning, you can do that, launch yourself in, and do like the flying dive kick, and it's actually safe. And so yeah, it just gets you in on the opponent if they get hit by it great, you got, like, it does a big chunk of damage. If they block it, well, then you're safe, or you can do a dash cancel to, like, put even more pressure on them. So, yeah, he has really good moves on getting in, does good damage. Just, overall, a really great, great character. And, um, oh yeah, also, after his plus ultra one, he goes into, like, a, a buffed state where he's crazy fast, and that makes his combos even better, so you get guaranteed, um, meterless combos, and it changes some of his moves, like his air attack string, uh, becomes like a twirling dive kick that does a lot of damage, depending on where you are. But yeah, I think he's overall a really great character and really fun. He's a total rushdown brawler character that can't really zone you out. But really good, really good stuff from Ida. Okay, let's just do it. Gran Torino. Um, I will actually order the S tiers, by the way. Um, hello? Um, I think Gran Torino is the best character in the game. I... He... Where do I even start talking about him? So, this might surprise you, because he's not the annoying, like, as popular online character that, like, everyone's using, like, 100% Deku, but he is ridiculously OP if you've ever played with him. So, not to mention that his combos are ridiculous. He gets a 16,000 combo with one dash cancel consistently, if you've lapped the combo, um because his combo string puts him in the air, so he can do his yellow tag into his quirk one, jump in the air and get an extension. Oh yeah, so not only does he get 16,000 damage for a single dash cancel, he also gets, I think it's 11,000 damage for no dash cancel. Like a completely free combo with Gran Torino, if he hits you ever and you don't have supports, no matter what the situation, you're losing 11,000 damage, uh, 11,000 of your life. Unless he messes up the combo, which can happen, but he's so strong and... <laughs> All of his fundamentals are so great. So his air attack string, I'm pretty sure, is one of the fastest in the game. He, like, his air attack is so fast that he can, a lot of the time, jump into the air and press the attack button before the opponent can even do their regular attack button. It's just so fast that he, he can do his jump animation and attack before most other people attack, like, on frame one. 
So, yeah, ridiculous air texturing, and that leads to his um annoying like air, like infinite situation where he like doesn't let you touch the ground because he'll dash in on you and like if you're in the air against Gran Torino there's really not that much you can do because he has just so many great tools in the air like because his air at his air attacks are crazy fast but he also has so much maneuverability like he can just like zoop onto the ground or zoop sideways or zippity zips with his um quirk ones so he's great maneuverability great uh, movement he can also charge them to give them make them yellow so he can he like, zoning is not a problem for Gran Torino. His charged Quirk 1 goes through projectiles because it's armored. His um, Tilt Quirk 2 is immune to some projectiles, and it's also... Both of his um, Quirk 1 and Quirk Tilt Quirk 2 are anti-zoning moves, and they're safe. Like, that Tilt Quirk 2 move is a, a move, where, you know, the one where he goes like, boop, 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 and chases you, like, to the ends of the earth. And, like, the only instance you're not going to hit, get hit by it is if you block it. Like, there's no way to avo avoid it unless you, like, do some crazy timed sidesteps or something. But, yeah, you're either going to get hit by it or you block it. And a lot of people, they think it's punishable, because that just makes sense. Something that goes full screen, anti-zoning tool, if they block it, punishable. Nope. Gran Torino just sidesteps and then goes in for a full 16,000, um, <laughs> air combo. And also, not to mention, his damage is even more ridiculous in the respect that even though... Uh, they cost a lot of uh, dash cancels. He can do like 21,000 um, damage combos for like four dash cancels because he can keep from the air, he can keep doing his attack string into Quirk 2. And for some reason, his Quirk 2 does not scale like in the slightest. So he can just keep doing that again and again and again until the opponent's dead and there's just nothing they can do about it. If you don't have supports and it's the final round and Gran Torino has meter, you're just gonna die. If you get hit, you're dead. <laughs> Gran Torino's just gonna do a combo that takes your entire health bar. Like, <laughs> what are you gonna do? But yeah, he also has really strong, like, advanced techniques, like with his, um, his baits, with his quirk one. Like, if he presses his quirk one and the opponent walks into it or tries to press a button, it, it'll dodge their button. And when he's, like, zoop, zips back to the ground, he hits them, and then that becomes a, um, free combo starter. So it adds more damage to his combos, and he's just such a good character. Oh, and also his red attack, his, um, like, guard attack attack, like, <laughs> that one, the guard break attack, is so strong, it, why, why does he track the opponent that well with it, like, if you, the opponent is sprinting, like, directly sideways or in circles, there is no way that they can avoid it, you have to sidestep at the exact moment that it's about to hit you in order to avoid it, so, either you, like, jump into the air and run away, or you just die against his red attack, it's ridiculous! <laughs> And it goes so far, it goes the whole screen until he, like, decides to stop chasing you. And not to mention, <laughs> he just has so many crazy things that, like, some of them don't even seem that great, because just everything he has is that great. His plus ultra one, uh, is a combo extender, so it not only does it do a big chunk of damage, he also just gets his combos off of it? Like, what? <laughs> like, what? No other character can do that, or easily, at least from, um from what I've seen, just easily gets a guaranteed combo off of their plus ultra one, because it splats them into the floor. <laughs> and his combos are ridiculous, so if you get hit by that, you're just dead. Like, uh, he's just such a ridiculous character. <laughs> and, like, he has no weaknesses. He can't get- he- obviously he can't zone you out, but he's not gonna get zoned out, he's gonna come in on you, and completely destroy you. He's safe, he has great mix-ups, he has great pressure, he'll break your guard, your best bet, with his quirk, like, tilt quirk ones and his tilt quirk two, and all that stuff. His multi-hitting attack string in the air, your guard's breaking, if he gets in close, you're dead. <laughs> Crazy strong character. Okay, ooh, Inasa, Inasa, one of my favorites. So, oof, but I don't know, okay, I don't exactly know where to put him. Um, ooh, ooh, ooh this is a hard one. So, he has been nerfed since One's Justice 1, but that doesn't mean he's a bad character. I still think he's very strong, but maybe not S tier. I'm gonna say he's A+, plus because he has really great zoning moves. So his um, Quirk 2 on the ground and in the air, like the boomerang, is ridiculous. Like, he gets a combo off of it. Like, he doesn't even have to react it, he can just throw it out, and then, like, two seconds later he's like, Oh, did that hit you? Oh, okay, I'll just press some buttons. Oh, and it combos, and I'm getting a full combo now. Um, yeah, and also his combos, he has really, I really love, his combos are one of the funnest things about Inasa, so he is 
really fun combos that are completely meterless and really flashy looking and really long. They do about average damage, maybe a little bit below, but that's totally fair seeing as they are zero dash cancels. But they're just so fun to do and you like use all of his quirk buttons in it and really flashy combos. If you haven't seen them, check out one of my combo or breakdown videos or anyone's. He just has really cool combos. <laughs> Um, but yeah, his, um, his space control, I would say, is really good as well, with that, um, boomerang, quirk 2 in the air. His quirk 1 is really fast, and his tilt quirk 1, you know, brings the opponent in if he needs an opportunity to anti-zone or whatever. And obviously his massive tornado is a really good move that he can hide behind. And yeah, a, lo a lot of Anasas I play against online are really annoying and really abuse his, um, air quirk 2. Uh, which is kind of annoying, but it shows that he has really good tools, but... I don't think he's S tier, because if you know what you're doing, you can counter what he's doing, kind of. Like, you, you can't, it's counterable. And his damage is a little bit below average. I kind of want to put him into S tier, but I feel like he's just not that great, and there are some mess-ups which he, like, really struggles with. But, actually, yeah, for now, I'll put him in S tier, because I do think he's a really strong character. Okay. Jiro, ooh, okay, so, basics for Jiro, obviously her quirk 1 is a good move, it's not <laughs> zoning, it's spamming if they're doing it the whole game, if the Jiro player is just constantly doing quirk 1, that's a spam, spammer, I'm sorry guys, you can use that move in neutral, because it is a slow projectile, you can use it as pressure or, or whatever, or um, like a poke tool, but don't just be pressing it the whole game, Jiro players, come on, use it strategically. So, I think she's a really interesting character. I really enjoy playing her. I do think she is S tier, though, because um, her quirk 2, um, where she, like, I don't know, shoves her earphones into you, or her earphone jacks, and, like, does the rapid hits. Um, if you do the rapid hits, where it does about 11 hits, you build so much meter. Like, it's almost a whole... I think it is, like, a whole letter, if not even more, just from that single attack. So she has crazy meter build, which really fits in with her combo playstyle, where she can just get... Um, she's really uh, uh, versatile with her combos, because she can always go into the same combo route from whatever kind of hit, like three hits into her um, quirk 2, into her tilt quirk 2, dash cancel, three hits into her quirk 2, tilt quirk 2. And you can make it fancy, change it depending on the situation, like maybe you've got a yellow attack, you don't want to... Whatever, you can make it easier, just dash cancel after the quirk 2. But she builds a lot of meter with her combos, like almost to the extent that they like don't cost anything. So the dash cancel in her combo is like counteracted by the fact that she builds so much meter from the combo. So, yeah, she's a really strong character. I think she has slight weaknesses that she can't zone people out, but she definitely can spam with that <laughs> quirk 1 projectile, because people can be really annoying with that. But I think she's uh, really fun to play, and... Because of the new dash cancel mechanics in One's Justice 2, and being able to dash cancel off of her tilt quirk um, 2, uh, made her a lot stronger. She has really high damage combos, really easy combos. Um, yeah, and she just has really good space control, and she's just overall a really solid character. Good buttons, yeah, good yellow attack, good red attack, good plus ultra. There's nothing bad about the character. And that's why she's an S tier, because she's a great character. She's just not stupid and cheesy like the S plus tier. Ooh, okay, Kaminari. Kaminari. <sighs> I think I'm gonna put him in A tier, A plus tier, just for the same reason that I put Darby in A plus tier. I believe that they are super strong characters. They could certainly be in S plus tier or S tier, um, depending on who's playing with them, but that's the thing. Uh, you have to kind of know what you're doing with Kaminari in order to use him effectively, simply because he has so many tools and so many things that you need to use in certain situations that it's hard to, like, use all of his amazing moveset effectively in a match. So he has, like, his great projectiles, which you can set up with, you know, like, the triangle electricity fields. His quirk to orb thing is really great. Um... He has, like, high damage combos, he can either go for, like, reset combos, he can go for free combos, um, or he can go for setups where he puts the opponent into a charge trap. He also has his charge squawk one, which gives him meterless, like, high damage. His plus ultra one is really great, and, um, if he goes into charge state, he, like, straight up becomes a boss character. Like, he's really ridiculous. Um, oh, I am tempted to put him into S tier, because 
against a Kaminari that knows what they're doing, and they get into charge state, like, he is just so ridiculous. He, like, breaks your guard instantly. His combos do, like, 11,000 damage for zero dash cancels, because he has, like, the quirk on projectiles now a, a um, combo starter. He does huge damage. But, luckily, he does still have the yay mode. Not that that really does that much, because if they just, like, run away for bits at the end, or have supports, then you're not really going to get much off of when he, like, discharges from his lightning state. So I don't know whether to put him in S or A plus tier. I might put him, if we're ordering the tiers, I might put him in high A plus tier. Here, I'll quickly um tier all the characters. So Gran Torino, top lead top, that works well. In this S tier, I think, um, actually this works pretty well. I'll put, no, yeah, that's ordered as well, I think. And in this A plus tier, yeah, Kaminari first, you, you, I'll put um Darby in here. Uh, Endeavor, Suyu, then all, for, all Might, and then All for One. Yeah. So yeah, Kaminari, very high A plus tier. He does have, you know, he's just not... Uh, I just can't put, get myself to put him in S plus tier, I don't know. He has really good moves, but... <sighs> no, fine. I'll put him in S tier. Because <laughs> his plus ultra one is really great, you can combo off of it, he gets huge damage. Yeah, I get he is a really good all round character. I don't know what I was saying. Okay, Kirishima. Kirishima, I'm definitely going to put in high A plus tier. Now, oh my god. Not about Kirishima, but Kirishima players online. I'm sorry if you're a Kirishima player. This might not apply to you, but why are you Kirishima players so dumb? <laughs> I know that's mean, but I have literally never fought a Kirishima that uses Kirishima well. That's probably just because not many people use him, but the only Kirishimas I fight against <coughs> are the ones that are just constantly going quark on, quark on, hard and hard and hard and press buttons, press buttons, haha, I'm unbreakable, unbreakable! Like, no, that doesn't work, I'm sorry. That's, that's awful tactics. You, you, you get slow. You can't just mash buttons just because you have armor on your moves. I'll do my armor attack, it'll be faster than your regular attack. Like, that's, that's, if you play Kirishima that way, he's, like, D tier. Like, he's, that's not how you should play Kirishima, just hardening all the time. But if you use him as a regular character and, like, use him, <coughs> well, I believe he could, like, be a S tier because he has really hot solid damage combos. Like, I think he gets 10,500 for a single dash cancel, and he gets, like, 11,500 for two dash cancels. So he's really solid damage if you know how to do his combos. Again, you can check out my combo, um, videos if you're interested in seeing those. But he does have, like, one of his, um, ooh, too many things to say. His Tilt Quirk 1 is a really good move, because it does a lot of guard pressure, it has multiple hits, so it builds meter well, and it's also, most of the time, safe on block, because it has such, so much pushback, and not that much recovery. Um, the opponent is basically never gonna punish you. Like, obviously, if they, like, Todorok and they do a plus ultra 1, they can punish you, but, like, it's practically a safe move you can use after any of his hits, so it's really good, and it's also his main combo starter. So yeah, his Tilt Quirk 1, which is a new move in this game, by the way, is a really good addition to him, because it makes him a lot stronger. Um, but he does have weaknesses against zoning and stuff, he doesn't have really anything that can just get him in. But he has really fun combos with like his two um, Quirk 2 hits in the air, and then he can go into another hit into his two Quirk 2 hits, and really cool combos that way. But I do feel like he has these weaknesses, and his armor can be used really well. Like, if you use it in block, or on wake up, or something, or somewhere where you're just not being crazy predictable, and just being like, harden and mash buttons, harden and mash buttons. But, um, it can be used very, like, efficiently. Like, if you, someone's pressing buttons, and then there's a slight gap in their string, you, if you're hardened, you can press the button there, because um, you'll punish the end of their string, and you'll have exploited a gaps. So, hardening is actually really good for exploiting gaps and stuff. And it can be good for zoning, like, uh, it's good for, like, running in, like, if you get nicked by a projectile, it's not that bad, because you can still keep moving. Um, one of it, I think Kirishima's actual best tool is this plus ultra one. For multiple reasons. One, you can combo off of it really easily, um, with, like, Bakugo, Kaminari, just, like, any combo sport, zero, whatever. But it also, 
it puts him in armored mode, but not only, like, does it put it in armor mode, it starts in armor mode. So even, like, the tiniest gap in a combo string, like, maybe, like, after the first hit and the second hit, where there usually isn't anything where you can, like, you know, do a sidestep out of, because, you know, obviously big gaps you can sidestep out of, but Kirishima, if you're blocking with Kirishima and you have a plus ultra one, you can just mash the plus ultra one button because while you're blocking, because, you know, plus ultra is a block and quirk 1 or quirk 2. So you can just mash the quirk 1 button while you're blocking, and if there's the teeniest little gap, you're getting your plus ultra 1, because you're gonna either punish whatever they're doing, or interrupt whatever the next attack was, because you're unbreakable. So <laughs> it's a really, really strong, and the same applies for his plus ultra 2, so his plus ultras are actually really, really strong, and it makes me want to put him a bit higher, but I do feel like he has his weaknesses, but he's really strong things with his plus ultras. Okay, now Mina, 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 Mina. She, I feel like, is a very solid character, and I want to put her here, A plus tier. She's really strong. She's like basically just an all-rounder character. Like he, she, she has good screen control with her tilt quirk one and her quirk one. Like, and if she does them in the air, they go even further. If she does her um, held till quirk one, where she throws them like really far, she is really good because she has the puddles. She has really good screen control actually with her um, you know, she has the wall, um, the yeah, all the puddles she can put out and the raining uh, quirk one from above. Actually, I'm gonna change this a bit. So Darby, you can go up into low S tier, and Mina can be high A plus tier because I feel like she's really good. She's really strong. Um, I don't know if you know this, but I found some new tech with Mina recently where if she does her um, quirk one in the air and the opponent gets hit by it, you can just dash in afterwards and get a combo from the air, like do her regular combos, and it does a lot, a lot of damage for zero dash cancels. Like I think it's 10,000 damage, zero dash cancel, just because again, they got hit by that. And obviously that adds a lot of damage to um, her wall splat combos. So yeah, I think she's a really fun character to play. She has really good um, moves, like her, her wall is really great for anti-zoning and screen control, because the opponent just can't run into you and, like, be YOLO. <laughs> um, her, all of her, like, acid puddles and throwing the puddles and that stuff is, um, really good screen control stuff. She has really good combos, obviously. She has, like, you know, her regular attack string to yellow attack into the break dance. She's really good meterless. She always can go into high damage combos, so she, she, it's not like she has situational combos, but yeah, she's really strong. I'm actually... Ooh. Tier lists are hard, because I feel like I actually kind of want to put her into, like, high S plus tier, but... Hmm. Yeah, I actually will. She's a really strong character, and she's all around, has, like, great moves, great anti-zoning, great combos. Her red attack is also <laughs> really amazing. It's almost like a yellow attack, because, like, you can use it as a counter, because it, like, dodges things, and she gets a combo off of it. It's really great. Um, I might switch these around like that. Yeah, and I might put Darby actually in here. <laughs> Sorry, I keep changing characters around, but man, this is hard. <laughs> okay. So, now with Mineta. He is a character, kind of like Darby and Kaminari. is really strong if you use him correctly but you really have to use him correctly for him to be strong. His strongest move is probably his air armor attack, his tilt attack in the air, where he does that like dive kick, that's <laughs> ridiculously strong yellow attack. It has great tracking, great distance. It uh, can, uh, can be safe, and if it's not safe, you just dash cancel and get out of the way. He has a really interesting setups and combos with his um, grape throws, and he has really good combos and um, interesting like setup for combo potential after his plus ultra one so he has really good moves he's definitely not bad his his red attack is really strong um yeah he, he's a really strong character he's just you know slightly weak his attacks are not that great he doesn't really have too much to contest with from long range and he just isn't really a character that you ever feel like you um have the immediate advantage with he seems like he's like you never feel like you're like, oh, I'm facing against a Mirio or a, I don't know, it's, I don't know, all for one or something. I, I'm gonna win this one. He's just like, if you play him well, he can be really strong. And if you get the setups and do correctly, he has really strong combos, setups, um, good damage. To, uh, yeah, 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 good damage. 
but you have to be able to use him well, and I think that's what makes him a little bit worse, but he's still a super strong character. Okay, Mirio. Um, hmm, do I put him in S plus or S? I'll do S plus, because I like Mirio. <laughs> But I'm going to put him in low S+. Plus. I think he's actually even below regular Deku. Um, so, Mirio. I mean, everyone knows the spiel about Mirio. <laughs> he has his permeation moves. There's a lot of Mirio players online. <laughs> so, it's very easy to complain about him. But I actually enjoy playing Mirio. And ignoring the, like, um, the annoying things, like his, uh, the infinite combo loop. Like, we're not talking about those. He's still a really strong character. He has uh, average damage, uh, like, you know, good average <laughs> is what I mean. Like, he gets 10,000 with a dash cancel. He um, has really good, uh, his, all of his, he's a very counter-heavy character, so, like, all of his moves work as a counter in a different scenario. Obviously, as his yellow attack, but his tilt quirk too. Red attack is also really good, depending on the certain situation. Um, you basically can't zone out Mirio because of his tilt quirk 1. Either, if you, he sees you do a projectile, he can just punish it by doing the tilt quirk one uppercut or he can also just like I a lot of people don't know this by the way you can actually cancel his tilt quirk one uppercut and just like do the thing where he goes underground and then just come up and not do the uppercut which is really strong because then you don't get punished for uh, doing the uppercut which is actually punishable um but i do feel like some of his moves should be a bit easier to punish because they are punishable so it wouldn't really be changing that much at a high level so, like, people are punishing Mirio's Quirk 1 and Tilt Quirk 1 very consistently um, when you're getting, like, ad against advanced players. But I feel like, especially in, like, my first days, um, when I was, you know, hadn't fought against that many Mirios, um, his things, and, like, for lower um, level players, they can be a bit hard to punish. So I think just make them a little bit more punishable, like his Quirk 1 and his Tilt Quirk 2, because a lot of the time they can just sidestep out of the way when you're about to punish them and then they get to punish you back and I feel like it would just make it more fair since they are really good moves <laughs> like becoming completely invincible is really strong and obviously he can like dash cancel to make them safe so he can either dash cancel into a sidestep or dash cancel into buttons even though that's not actually uh legit that is yeah dash canceling into buttons on block isn't actually real stuff um but he can do that if he wants, but, like, he can make it safe, but I feel like, he, to, in order to make it safe, he should have to do a dash cancel. Like, he, he should do a dash cancel into a sidestep in order to make his thing safe. I feel like that would just make him a lot more fair, and people would be okay with that. And, yeah, I feel like... I really don't know why people complain about Mirio that much. Like, his his buttons are, like... Yeah, like, his Quirk 2 string does some damage. His Plus Ultra 1, you can extend off of it, depending on if you're near a wall or if you have a support. Uh... You know, decent combos. I think he's just really fun, unique character to play. To play, and he has good mix-ups on block. Like you can do his tilt quirk one, like cancel, or into his red attack, or whatever. Yeah, I really enjoy playing him. I'm actually, ooh, to put him in S tier. Um, no, okay. People complain about him too much. I'll put him in S plus tier just for you guys, though, so I don't get roasted in the comments. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, we're up to Momo now. You ready for this? I think Momo is here. <laughs> and this might be my bias. It probably is my bias, but I think Momo is a great character. She has her weaknesses, but she's just too, too much fun for me to put her like any lower on the tier list. She has really strong moves. She is so unique, and she's so strong, unique, and fun to play, and not annoying to play against, but I feel like she's just, like, the optimal character in this game. Not only is she really strong, but, like, she doesn't feel like she's, like, cheesing you out. And I feel like she's a, um, really fun character to play, and that, like, it's not like you're like, oh, I'm just gonna get, you know, 15,000 damage combo, oh, lol, so overpowered, but she has all these moves that you have to really play, and it's not like you have to be, like, god tier like with Darby and you have to like really be thinking about everything but with Momo you really have to like think about the situation in like a fighting way so like <laughs> like you have to think of like oh is this a matchup where putting up my shield is worthwhile like am I against 100% Deku or someone that has really good pressure breaks my guard a lot if, well should I put up my shield should I like spend the time putting up my shield because you know she doesn't take any guard 
damage or like block pressure when she has her shield up so she can like block forever um, and red attacks don't do any damage so it's actually really good against 100% Deku and you just really and you can like choose oh is the like charging up my cannon gonna be worthwhile in this game like is it gonna help like is the opponent gonna let me have time to do it is it like, am I going to have time to put it out? Like, if the opponent's far away, obviously, yeah, I will. But if they're trying to rush me down, there's no point in getting the cannon out, because it's not, like, a huge damage combo extender or anything. It's just, like, a, a um, interesting zoning tool. It is pretty good for pressure, but, like, I'm just trying to say, you have to think with her, and you have to, like, which weapon is going to be the ideal for this scenario? Like, is in on this map, like, she has to really think, like, how, like, anime's, anime tries to... Oh, what am I even saying? How shonen fighting anime try to get you to think about fighting, like, oh, you know, use your environment and use your opponent's weaknesses against them. You really have to do that with Momo. Like, if you're on a stage where there's a lot of, like, walls, you want to use her spear because she gets really easy um, wall hit confirms for a lot of damage. If there's not many walls, maybe you go for her sword because she has really high meterless damage with her sword, because of the, the throw, you get an extension off of it. She gets really good combos with the sword. But maybe if you're against a character that really wants to, like, stay close and rush you down, like Gran Torino or something, you might want to stick with your pole, because she has really fast attacks with the pole. So you can, like, punish things better, um, it reaches further than her other weapons, and it's more for, like, being fast and, like, nimble with her attacks. And so yeah, I think she's just such a versatile and fun character to use, and like her Mandryoshka dolls, like, they don't do any damage, and they, um, scale your combo quite a bit, so it's not like you're gonna zone them out with those, but if you do manage to get the hit, you can get a combo after them, so they're, like, all of her tools are tools that are good. They're not broken, but they're good, and they're fun to use, and they all have a purpose, so she's just a really awesome, well-rounded character. I'm really impressed with how they changed her in this game. And yes, she has been nerfed in ways from the previous game, but that doesn't change my opinion. I think she's <laughs> crazy. I think she's really strong. But unlike other characters in S plus tier, I don't hate fighting against her. Momo is actually like the most fun character to fight against and play with in this game. So that's my hot take on Momo. <laughs> okay, Mr. Compress. Hmm. I'll say he is... This is a hard one. So he has high damage meterless combos. But other than that, he's not... Okay, yeah, I will put him in S tier. Around about... Maybe here. He's like mid S tier. He's really strong. He gets high meterless combos that can be a bit hard. Um, if you're bad at combos or if you haven't labbed them. They're not ones that you can just like instantly do. Like a lot of the characters in S tier. Like Gran Torino or whatever. But... He has good damage in combos. Um, he is pretty decent anti-zoning. Actually, no, 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 no. He is really good anti-zoning. <laughs> because of his quirk too, it's like a parry but for projectiles. So he, especially against characters like 100% Deku, if he throws out his really slow-moving projectile, Mr. Compress can just absorb it, and then he can use it himself to throw back at 100% Deku. So he is really interesting anti-zoning, and I really like it for that. Um... And he also has like his held tilt quirk one is a projectile like move and obviously his quirk one with the meteor you can't, it's not that good as a zoning move but you can use it um if the opponent's far away to catch them off guard if you time it correctly but yeah i feel like he's a character he's quite uh he's a little bit he's sort of difficult to use i think he's yeah he's pretty difficult to use um but his reward is pretty high and if you use all of his tools correctly, like his Quirk 1 and his Tilt Quirk 1, like you can use them really well in pressure, like his Tilt Quirk 1 into his um, Quirk 1 release, and then that's plus on block, and then you can break their guard if you have the right situation. But you also need to like learn to be um, adaptable, like change his combos depending on the stage, depending on what you hit them with. Like if you're near a wall, you need to do two hits into his armor attack rather than the three hits into the Tilt Quirk 1. So you do have to think when you're using him, so he's not overpowered, but he is definitely very strong, and he has strong tools, like his red attack is really strong, and yeah, he has re really strong moves. So, he's a very solid S-tier character. Oh, okay, okay. Now, muscular. Okay, so, some of you may have... I've jo I joined the uh, Discord for My Hero Wants Justice 2, and as soon as I joined, people were like, oh, Muscular's so bad, he's D-tier, worst character in the game, he's so bad, why is, like, don't they buff him? Buff Muscular. Um, which took me for surprise, because I was going to put him, like, here. <laughs> and I think I will put him, like, 
maybe here in front of Jiro. Maybe maybe just behind Jiro. Because I feel like muscular. Okay, and I know this is going to be a controversial one because I know people's opinion and and almost everyone thinks muscular is the worst character in the game. But I've used muscular and I've played a lot of games with him and done the breakdown. And I do think he's a really solid character. He has like almost anything you could want in a character like muscular. In so like a brawler, rushdown, mix-up, pressure, up-close character. So he has a chargeable red attack, so he has mix-ups with his red attack on block. Um, his DP, yes, he's been nerfed from One's Justice 1, but we're not talking about that. So his Dragon Punch, or um, Quirk 2, where he like, you know, booms in the air and then comes back down. It is a lot slower in this game, but it is still a great move. He, he goes so high in the air, Oops, sorry, we cut him out of it out a bit there, but um, back on Muscular and his Quirk 2, it is quite slow compared to how, oops, it previously was, but it launches him so high in the air, so it's really good for anti-zoning, he goes over practically any projectile, and he moves so fast that it um, destroys their tracking, and he can press it once, like, just to put him in the air, and then when he's in the air, like, the, the first hit of the Quirk 2 is, like, pretty safe. Like, I don't think anyone's ever punished me for doing it. And if they try to, you know, you can do a sidestep or, you know, just get out of the way or do something else from when, when you're in the air. So you can use that to launch you into the air and it goes diagonally forward. So you go over projectile and like kind of leap towards your opponent. And if you press it again, like if you know it's going to punish them, you can press it again and you go down and hit them. And it's a really good um, wall splat tool. So <laughs> it'll just send the opponent completely flying into the wall if they get hit by both hits. So he gets a wall splat. And so yeah, I do think his Quirk 2 is a really strong move. Fight me. It's amazing. <laughs> and I don't think he does that badly against um, uh, zoning. Like, his run is a short animation. Like, he goes, like, a tiny bit. But that's actually pretty strong for a character like Muscular. When you want to weave in through projectiles, you don't want a long run an animation, because you can't run, you can't cancel runs um, by blocking. So you, you can only press buttons. So when you're trying to get through projectiles and not get hit by everything, you want to have a short run that you can block if there's a projectile coming at you if you're not going to avoid it. Like, that, that just makes sense. It's like in MK11 when you do a, like, a, um, uh, cancel your dash into a down one in order to avoid projectiles. It, like, makes it shorter so that you can have time to block and not get hit by things, rather than just, like, YOLO running in. Okay, and we haven't even gotten to what's really good about Muscular, which is his damage. So, if you level up with Muscular, like, uh, level up, like, level up his arms, I mean, like, charge up his muscle arms, he becomes, like, straight up a boss character. So, he can do, I think, Meterless, if he's charged up, he does an easy 11 to 12,000 damage combo for zero dash cancels. Just from doing, like, a few hits into his grab, into his, um, uh, his Quirk 2 string, easy, huge damage and he still has his arms, but the thing, oh, and also, when he has his arms charged up to any state, he gets a yellow attack loop, so he can do two hits into his yellow, and two hits into his yellow, um, but you can only do it twice, or else it'll meteor blow, but it gives him more combos, so when he's charged up even slightly, he does tons of damage, and if he's charged up all the way, he does huge damage, and if you want to, you can cash out his um, quirk one. When you have all the muscles charged up, he gets a new move with his quirk one, which is an armored, just like single punch, which does 6,000 damage for the single punch, which means it's the, like probably the most damaging single move in the game, like single hit that's not like a plus ultra, obviously. So like you can do two hits into armor attack, two hits into armor attack, two hits into the grab, and then finish it with a quirk one. And that's like, ugh, I don't remember from my head, but I think it's like, 13,000 damage for zero dash cancels. It might even be more, like 15. It's a huge chunk of damage for zero dash cancels, just because you, um, and by the way, that that punch does use up his, um, arm charge, but <laughs> that's so much damage for zero dash cancels. It's so ridiculous. And, um, because you, you want to do meterless combos a lot of the time with muscular, you will have plus ultra meter, and that's lucky because his plus ultra one not only is it really easy to combo into and does a lot of damage, and wall splats super consistently, like it's one of the best wall splat plus ultras, like it just sends them tumbling into the wall, um, it charges up his arms. So you do a single plus ultra one, you don't even have to do like the hold, like charging thing when you're far away, or hit the opponent on block with the charge. And like, by the way, it's not even that hard to get the arms up, people complaining about like, oh, but you have to charge up his arms to get damage. Like, if the opponent's blocking, just do two hits into quirk one, and then you're already in charged one. You do it again, you're in, like, two, charge two, like, two muscle arms. 
Like, it's not that hard. Or you can just, like, if you have ever knocked the opponent, like, far away, just hold it down. It only takes a little amount of time, and then, you know, you've gotten your charged arms, and you're, like, overpowered. And yeah, he has good sidesteps. He, like, <laughs> he's just a, a good character. Like, I don't know what people don't like about him. His plus ultra one gives him his, uh... Hello, what happened to me? It gives him his arms. And yeah, the quirk one with his arms is an armor attack. So if you see someone press a projectile, you can press that. And it goes a surprisingly large distance. And you just armor through their projectile and hit them with that massive damage punch. And like, yeah, muscular, I don't know. Good mix-ups, good pressure. Um, yeah, good, like huge damage for Metalus. You know, good side steps, and he has pretty decent, like, anti-zoning. I don't know what there isn't to like. <laughs> okay, Nezure. Nezure, I feel like, is a character that people were initially like, Oh my god, she's top tier, she's so annoying, so annoying, so annoying, I hate her so much. But, I feel like people have calmed down and realized, like, you know, you can counter zone her. But I do still think she's very strong, and I'll put her in high-ish S tier. So, obviously, she has... Pretty strong zoning, and it's more uh, unlike some zoning where. <laughs> Whoa, what was that noise that just came out of me? <laughs> unlike some zoning where, like, you can just keep spamming projectiles that, like, track the opponent, like some characters, like, uh, maybe, like, Darby or not Jiro, but some characters that have, like, really good projectiles that they can just, like, press the whole time. Or, like, the base Deku's charge projectile. So her projectiles go in a straight arc most of the time, but she can directionally input them to like make them go left or right, which is really good, but it means you have to imagine thinking about your zoning. Oh my god. But yeah, you have to like predict, oh, is the opponent going to be trying to run left or right? And if they are trying to move left or right, then you can catch them if you predict it correctly. And she has a charged uh, projectile, which puts like the, like I don't know, massive like wave of beams just like sitting on the screen. Which is like just it sits there for a while, so it's obviously super plus on block. She can go in for her ridiculous red attack. So she does have a lot of like overpowered things. She has pretty high damage combos. Um and she has pretty decent meterless damage if you do two hits into a yellow attack, and then you can like charge up the uh projectile and do that in the one combo. And she can get some decent meterless damage that way, but most of the time you're gonna be doing one dash cancel for like some average ten thousand damage combos. But she can Kind of like Gran Torino, she can keep doing dash cancels quite a bit to get high damage. But yeah, I think that's Nezure in a nutshell. You know, she, her yellow attack also is really good. It has a large hitbox and is yellow for quite a while. Her red attack reaches really far and it's really hard to um, counter because it's hard to hit her when she's doing it because she's like launching at you and she tracks you down like really well. So it's a really annoying move, especially when she's got her um, charged Quirk 1 out. It's a really hard setup to avoid her doing her red attack after that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Nomu. Nomu, Nomu, Nomu. Um, I'm going to put him here. Yes, he is annoying, but he's bad. And he's bad because his buttons... Like, you can tell they didn't really think about him that much, <laughs> especially since he doesn't have a plus ultra 2. Like, he's just not that interesting to play with. Almost all of his quirk buttons have the same function, but just look slightly different. Like, they're all just multi-hitting YOLO moves. Like, he has the multi-punch move, he has the multi-hitting roll, he has the, like, upwards roll, he has, like, the weird spinning, like, <laughs> Beyblade pose spin thing but they all kind of like do the same thing like you can just throw them out dash cancel to make them safe his combos can be uh, usually a bit below average or quite a bit below average damage but if you use like in my combo video i used the shigaraki support and got pretty good damage that way um so you know he's kind of average but being average in this game makes you pretty low since everyone has <laughs> overpowered things about them uh he does have really good block pressure, though. It's probably one of the best things about him. If he's in the air, and he does... Oh, yeah, his air yellow attack is also probably one of my favorite things about him. Because it just, like, reaches across the entire screen. And it's really good for anti-zoning, because he just flies over and belly flops over any zoning the opponent's trying to do. And if they block it, you can cancel it into his quirk 2, and cancel his quirk 2 into his yellow attack, and then you can keep doing that until the guard breaks. So that's one of the power thing that he has, even though, unfortunately, he's kind of low tier. 
Okay, overhaul V2. Oof. This will be a controversial one, but I think he is the bottom of S tier, maybe even A plus. But I'll, I'll put him in. I'll put him in S tier. Um. Okay. So yes, he has great projectiles. His quirk one and his air quirk two track you to hell, <laughs> which is annoying. Yes, and his quirk two um, is an annoying move, but. Like if you, I feel like you have to play Overhaul V2 to really understand how it feels, because he is a very slow character. He doesn't really have anything that's that fast that you can just like throw out, like Bakugo or a lot of other characters that is there like, oh, I need a fast like getaway move or whatever, like get out of jail free card. He doesn't really have any of that. You really have to plan what you're doing. Obviously, unless you're being a, like annoying batch and just running away in zone, and you don't have to do that. But if you're like playing normally. Like I like to, you know, you have to t like think about when you're going to do his quirk too, because it has slow startup, and you have to do it in a range where it'll hit the opponent, and uh, like maybe do it when they're like coming down after you've done a combo, so that you can catch them like landing on it. There's a lot of interesting ways you can um use his moves <laughs> in a non-annoying spammy way, but he does also get you know really easy uh, damage, you know, few hits into tilt quirk two, dash cancel, few hits tilt quirk two again. I mean, till Quark 1, I mean, and yeah, he's gotten like 10,500 damage. Uh, his plus ultra 1 is pretty interesting, um, how it heals him. I really like that. It makes him a bit unique. But yeah, I just like him. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, he is a Zona. You know, don't play him as a Zona. You know, be the light. <laughs> like, I don't like playing him as a Zona, because zoning is not something that I really enjoy playing. So I you know, choose to use him as, as Rushdown, and because he does have really good moves, like, oh my god, his Tilt Quirk 2, that red move is probably one of the most overpowered red moves in the game. It is literally unavoidable unless you, like, do a sidestep, like, two frames before it hits you. Like, you can do a sidestep, like, as he's running it, as he's doing, like, the, like, instant charge at you, and it'll still hit you. He'll, like, curve and hit you. And it goes in for a full combo, It's and it reaches so far, it's just ridiculous in a lot of ways. So yeah, I'm pretty comfortable putting him in low S tier. He's really strong, obviously, great zoning, but you do have to think about when uh, stuff when you're using him. <laughs> okay, ooh, overhaul v1, so regular overhaul. I'm actually tempted to put in S plus tier. And um, I will, just because... Make it interesting. <laughs> no, but I do believe that he is extremely high. Maybe he's just high S tier, but I do think he's really strong and probably deserves a place in S plus tier. So, um, obviously off the bat, his zoning is really great. His tilt quirk 1 projectile catches people trying to jump. Okay, so his quirk 1 is the one where he does like the um, like shotgun like splatter rocks coming up from the ground, they lead for a full combo, obviously the opponent's going to try and not get hit by those, it, is, it covers a huge amount of the screen though, so they're so ridiculous, and I love using them, but they're really strong, and um, they're plus one block, the ones from far away, if he's using it as a projectile, he can press it just over and over and over again, and if the opponent tries to jump into the air, because they're trying to avoid the ones on the ground, he does a tilt quirk one, and it snipes them out of the air, he, if they're really strong, and they come out, the tracking on his tilt quirk one, um, like, rock ejection things is ridiculous. Like, they can be, like, dashing in at you or doing a sidestep, and it'll still, like, catch them and, like, whack them out of the sky. And if they get hit by that, they get launched all the way back to full screen, and they have to deal with his zoning all over again. <laughs> um, he also has really good combos, like, you know, a few hits into dash cancel, and then, like, two hits in the air, and then dash can- um, you don't even have to dash cancel. His hits in the air, he can actually just, like, dash afterwards and, like, do again. So he can do two hits in the air, and then like do a sidestep, then two hits in the air, and then into um, his quirk one in the air, which is a combo extender. So he has really good moves for um, zoning, extending combos. Obviously with his quirk one, it's like a meterless combo extender. Um, his quirk two is a move that has really good tracking. So if the opponent's trying to be in the air, if you just jump in the air and do his quirk two, he'll just like dash at the opponent <laughs> like super fast. And it like, I don't think it's possible to avoid. It has the most ridiculous tracking on it. He'll hit you with it, it'll do a bunch of damage, and he can get a combo off of it if he wants, if he hits you in the air with it. But I think he's just overall, he, like, excels at any, 
like type. Like his buttons are all great. His red attack, you know, you can combo off of it. Um, he has a tilt quirk too, which breaks armor and is really fast and does a ton of damage. He uh, has ridiculously great zoning. Um, he is really, and he can get like he can combo off of his zoning as well. I don't know if I said his quirk one. Like he can easily combo off of that because it holds him in that dome. He can just jump in the air, dash like dash after them, like on reaction from seeing it hit. So <laughs> super strong stuff. Also, <laughs> he has so many zoning tools. I even forget about them. His air. Quirk, um, Tilt Quirk 1, like, the regular version or the held version are both great, like, there's a shotgun version or the, like, precise version that you can combo off of, he just has so many, um, like, control and zoning tools that he, he can be really annoying to fight against if the opponent really knows how to zone correctly, and, like, I have played with him, and if I want to, I can zone out my opponent, almost any opponent, very easily, because he's just so oppressive from any distance, so, very strong, I might even put him above Mirio. Okay, Rapa, Rapa, Rapa. Um, oh, everyone likes Rapa for some reason, but I'm gonna put him, like, here. And that probably will make Rapa mains happy, because they're always like, Oh, Rapa's so bad, make him buff him, buff him, buff him. But, like, don't. <laughs> don't buff Rapa. He, he's a really strong character. Like, people are saying, Oh, he, he gets zoned out so easily, you know, oh, he has nothing good to get in. Like, his Quirk 1, if I'm not wrong, is a string that is armoured, that has good range. Like, you can armor through projectiles from a mid-distance. He has, a, like, obviously his walk speed is ridiculously slow, but you're not going to be walking around. So he uses dash. It's a pretty average speed of dash, you know. And if you play Rop correctly, you're not going to let the opponent get away from you, because he has a really oppressive moveset. That, and, like, ridiculous damage. <laughs> from the beginning of the game, he can get... Like, it's almost... Ooh, sorry. He's almost Gran Total. You... Gran Torino level damage with Rapa, because, like, you know, he charges up his punches, and then he, like, his Quirk 2, if he's done his Tilt Quirk 2, his Quirk 2 does, like, so much damage, but yeah, Rapa is a really strong character, but yes, he does have weaknesses, like, he does have a bit of trouble dealing with zoning, but he is still insanely strong, does huge damage, has great moves, like, I don't even think he, do he is that bad against zoning, like, he <laughs> he's really strong. Um... Yeah, yeah. I'm very comfortable putting him there. Now, hoof, Seiji. I think I'm gonna have to put him... I'm not gonna make him the only one in B tier. I might actually... Yeah, okay. I'm gonna put these two characters in B tier. I'm gonna say these two are tying for worst in B tier. So it goes Fat Gum. Actually, no, it'll go Gang Orca, Fat Gum, Seiji. No more. And it's not to say that any of these characters, they don't have OP stuff, because basically every character in this game has, like, overpowered moves that they can use that are really annoying. So Seiji, his broken thing is his held tilt quirk too, where he has, the, like, the hand grab clap thingy, where he, like, grabs the opponent, it's a red move, has great tracking, he has to charge it, but when he charges it, if he has his fingers up, ooh, um... <laughs> His, like, charged Quirk 1 fingers, where he makes them float around him. If he has those, they come out while he charges it, so it's, like, unblockable. Like, there's nothing you can do about it. You can't sidestep, because all the fingers are coming out. You can't block, because you'll get hit by the red. Like, you just die. Um, and he can do pretty good damage. Like, even if they're not real combos, he can do, like, you know, two hits into the grab, dash cancel, two hits into the... Like, if you do two hits into the red grab, it's not a real combo, but it does good damage, and, like, when you're playing online, it does a lot of damage, and just as long as, like, you're ending with a meteor blow, um, and you charge up your fingers, like, you can't go wrong with Seiji, but obviously he does have quite a lot of weaknesses, um, not a weakness, a strength of his is, a uh, his regular attack string, I actually really like how his attack string is, like, a projectile, I really like his, um, regular attacks, because they're really interesting, because, you know, really good spacing, footsie tools, you know, he can poke with the finger, like, in a literal sense, he can poke, but, you know, when he's poking in the neutral, he can't, doesn't have to commit to a regular attack string. But yeah, he does have his weaknesses, his zoning isn't actually that great, like, if you've gotten zoned out by Seiji, you probably deserved to, <laughs> sorry. But yeah, his projectiles aren't that great, they're all very slow, they don't really have that many benefits, his combos are 
once again, a bit below average damage. He can counteract that by doing his red attack in, um, instead of doing true combos, but... And his air uh, attack string is kind of bad. It doesn't reach that far. He has kind of a bad hitbox, and yeah. He just is less developed and than other characters in the game, so I think he deserves his lower tier, because you never feel like you have, or at least when I'm playing Seiji, I never feel like, oh yeah, got this game, like, super guaranteed, no way I can lose, like, it's always kind of like, oh wait, what if the opponent, like, realizes that what I'm doing is fake, or, yeah. Okay, before style Shigaraki is S tier, maybe here, so... I mean, he's very similar, I and mean, there's not too much I have to say. If you've played One Justice 1, he's basically the exact same. Um, he got a new move, he's still Quirk 1, but it's not really that great. You can use it to, like, put on, you know, puddles on the screen, so it's kind of good. But, like, why would you use that when he has his Tilt Quirk 2, I mean, his regular Quirk 2 puddle, which is, like, one of the best moves in the game. Um, I might actually put him up a bit higher, because he's he is actually really strong. Um, so he has pretty good meterless damage if he just does two hits into the puddle, two hits into the puddle, two hits into like quirk one string or whatever, he gets really good damage that way. But he also has like probably the best Oki. And if you don't know what Oki is, it's basically like wake up um wake up pressure reset game. Like you can Google it. It's a fighting game term. But like if he knocks the opponent down and gets a meteor blow after his like regular combo, like you know, a few hits into the thing and then dash cancel into the thing into like the armor attack and you know Check out the combo video, but he ends his combos um, with his Quark 1, and it'll Meteor Blow, but that's good, because it leaves the opponent kind of close to you, and then he can just do his Puddle, and then the opponent ha is like on a mix-up on Wake Up. So not only have they just gotten hit by a, like an 11,000 damage combo, but now he's put the Puddle down where they are getting up, so if they stand there, they have to block the Puddle, like they can't just stand there and run away, they have to block the Puddle if, if they... um are on the ground, if they choose to stay on the ground, but if they block the puddle, then they're almost guaranteed to get into either his red attack that he can combo from, or either his red attack that leads to his instant kill, which is also overpowered. But, and if they choose to jump, then Shigaraki can jump before them and anti-air them before they can press any buttons. And if they do, like, try to, like, jump away so that he can't reach them, um, he can do his yellow attack that'll, like, chase them down and he gets a full combo off of that. So he's really scary on Oki. And also, like I mentioned before, he has the, like, instant kill grab, so if he does four of his charged Tilt Quirk 2 grabs, it's an instant kill. And, like, yeah, it's a really threatening. I talk about all of the, like, stuff that I mentioned in this video a lot more in my breakdown videos, but, yeah. He's a pretty scary character if you use him correctly. Okay, now, new Shigaraki, I feel like, is actually basically the same. Or maybe, no, I'll put him up a bit high, because he is pretty strong. I'll put him in front of Inasa. So, um, if you haven't seen like anyone use this new Shigaraki at a high level, his combos are broken. I don't think they intended them for to be this broken, but they are. So he can do two hits into the grab, into the Quirk 1, like, ground rip puddle thing, and then do like the running puddle, and then loop that into the grab, into the ground rip puddle. His so like, Tilt Quirk 2, Quirk 1, Tilt Quirk 1, Till Quark 2, Quark 1, Till Quark 1, and like do that a lot. It's zero dash cancels and it does so much damage. <laughs> like, for what it is. It can be a bit difficult to execute, I do admit. Um, I find it a bit difficult sometimes, but if you're fighting against a slightly advanced new Shigaraki, then like, damn. If you get hit and you don't have supports, you're like losing tons of health from his like looped combos and it doesn't cost him anything, so. Yeah, it's really scary stuff. And because they're on the ground the whole time, he can just go into a plus ultra one, and then <laughs> it's huge damage. It's really scary stuff. I I am actually tempted to put him actually a bit higher. I'll put him around here. Just because of the, like, like sheer comeback ability. Like, if you don't have supports, he can just do a huge damage combo that, like, leaves you on the ground. And, like, and he has also has pretty good screen control. Like, uh... His Quirk 1 is a great projectile, obviously it only goes on the ground, but still, if the opponent's trying to run around, it still hits them, because it has great tracking. His um, running puddle leaves a massive puddle on the screen, so, like, Tilt Quirk 1, I mean, leaves a massive puddle, which can hit the opponent, so yeah, very strong. Uh, I might put him around here, or maybe, no, yeah, he's, he's really strong, I'll put him there. Okay, shoot style, Deku. 
Unlike the other Dekus, I don't hate this version of Deku. I actually enjoy playing with him, and I don't hate fighting against him. Some people really hate fighting against him, and I don't exactly know why. <laughs> people have tried to explain it to me, but I still don't understand. <laughs> like, I'll put him in... low-ish S tier. He's still a super strong character. He has um, great damage combos, great damage meterlessly, might I say, as well. You know, three hits into armor attack, and then cancel his armor track into quirk buttons. You can add a dash cancel to get really good damage um, with his like resets from doing his like tilt attack on the ground or his um, uh, tilt quirk 2. He can get really high damage from that. But other than that, he's a pretty simple character. They've given him a new projectile, which gives him some, you know, good poking tools so he doesn't have to commit to a full button, which he can be whiffed punished for. But, you know, yeah, that projectile is really good, and it does a lot of guard pressure for some reason. Like, if you're doing a few hits into that, like, it almost instantly breaks that guard just from that one uh, quirk one, which is really interesting. But I, And um, that is actually just part of Shoot Style's Deku, uh, Shoot Style Deku's whole game plan. Like, he has probably the best um, uh, uh, pressure in the game. So not, like, mix-ups on block, like, you know, with red attacks and stuff, but he has so many, he can link all of his attacks, like, on block in such a scary way that he can, like, mix you up, and if you don't guess correctly, he's gonna break your guard and then go in for a full combo. So, like, his regular attack string does have a gap, but you can't sidestep his gap because it's a, um, a tracking gap, so you have to actually interrupt it with a button. But if you choose to interact, um, try to interrupt with a button, if he just does a yellow attack, then he's going to interrupt your attempt at an interrupt. So he, he has really good pressure, and obviously if he gets all three hits out, he can cancel the third hit into his air yellow attack, and then from the air yellow attack, he does his um, tilt quirk two in the air, and then cancel that into his quirk two string, and then you, your guard's broken and you guessed wrong, so now he gets a full combo. So he can be really scary that way, and that's about probably the best thing about him is his crazy guard pressure, but obviously he has pretty decent and good combos as well. And his red attack's really good as well, so he's really good fundamentals, but I just he's not as OP as some other characters. Okay, Night Eye, Night Eye. I think we're gonna go back to talking about A tier characters. I think he's probably about here, like right beside his mate All Might. Um so so Night Eye. Obviously, like all the other characters, like all the characters, even Nomu and Seiji, all these characters can be super strong if you use them correctly. I just feel like Night Eye has, you know, these characters, you need to put more effort in order to use them effectively. So Night Eye, he has pretty good zoning. You have to think about what you're doing because he has like a lot of different interesting ways of using his projectiles. And you can't just throw them out because they don't have that great tracking. So you have to think about which one's the best to use in certain situations, whether you should charge them up, whether your opponent's going to try and throw something, or like you should step out of the way and then throw your air projectile or whatever. So yeah, he has to, you know, be wise. You know, he's a, a smart character. And um, yeah, he has decent damage. If he does two dash cancels, he gets like 10,500. So he's like average, maybe a little bit below average damage, but he still gets good combos, which is good. He has really good maneuverability with his um tilt quirk too, like his slide where he like <laughs> ninja slides all over the floor. It's actually really good maneuverability because he goes so low. He even goes under a lot of projectiles and because he goes like sideways in such a huge arc, he like avoids basically anything and it's really fast. So like if you see anyone do a projectile, oh, just Tilt Quirk 2, either it'll punish your opponent or you'll just dodge the projectile and you're fine. Um, and obviously one of the most interesting things, po interesting parts, things about him, parts about him, is his parry. Because that's his his only, like, quirk move in the game, like, that actually shows his foresight quirk. But, um, yeah, uh, it's really, okay, the concept is really good. I really love that you hit the parry, you get some damage from doing the parry, but you've also used your quirk fort sight on them, so you can see what they're doing before they actually, like, the character actually does it. So the opponent's basically put in, like, a huge lag state, but, except you can see what they're about to do. So I really love his parry and the concept behind it. I just feel like it's trash, <laughs> because it is, it's so slow on starting up. Like, it's one, I probably might even be slower than fat gums it's just really slow and has really um bad recovery so like after he stops doing the um parry 
like he like there's a lot of frames where he can be punished for doing it. Like if the opponent sees it that um that you did it, they can just wait for like a second and then punish you like super easily for it. I just feel like if they um buffed it and made it a lot faster, had better recovery, just like Fat Gum, these two characters would definitely be like somewhere in the middle of the S tier. But just simply because they're like parries, which is supposed to be like their core tools, is like kind of bad. It it really limits their ability to do well. So yeah, I'm comfortable putting Night Eye there. Okay, ooh, Stain. Stainy Stain. Okay, I'm gonna put him high A plus tier. I was gonna put him in S tier, but I don't know if he quite fits there, and a lot of people don't actually realize that Stain is actually a really strong character. He has almost anything that you would want. He doesn't zone you out, per se, but he has his um, Quirk 1 knife string is something that he can use from a distance uh, if someone is trying to zone you out, so he, he, he can compete from a long range. And especially since his Quirk 1 string with the knives puts a, his like teleportation knife out there, like if he hits that against the wall or puts it on the opponent, um, like if they, yeah, uh, he can just teleport right up to the opponent. And so, you know, if they're trying to do a projectile or something, you know, he gets to punish them for it, so he can stay up close. But he can also, you know, run away and do some space control with the knives as well. But he also has really cool combos using that Quirk 1 string, so if he does two hits in the air into his knife string into the teleport, he can actually get an extension that way. So, like, two hits, Quirk 1 string with the teleport, two hits, and then, like, into the Quirk 2, and you're getting really good damage. And I feel like just all of Stain's fundamentals are just really good. Like, his uh, regular attack string is decently fast, it has a good hitbox, um, he has decent damage combos, probably a bit, uh, actually quite a bit above average damage combos, and he can combo off of his plus ultra 1 pretty easily, which is, uh, well, very easily, what am I saying? <laughs> it's a combo plus ultra 1. But yeah, I, I'm tempted actually to put him in S plus tier, because he is a really good character. I might put him at the bottom. He do I don't even actually know what his weaknesses are, he just doesn't feel as strong and overpowering as these characters above hand. Like, he's very solid, but he doesn't really have anything broken that he's going to cheap the opponent out with. Okay. Uh, twice. Twice, twice, twice. Okay. Twice is an interesting one, because a lot of people say he's, like, top tier, but he's not that great, but he's fun to use and has a lot of good things about him. So I think I'm going to put him, like, mid S tier, because he's really strong, obviously, so you know, Twice has, like, great combos, he has really fun combos, and, like, they're meterless, and they're long, and they're flashy, and I, I, I that's one of my favorite things about Twice, and his attack strings are <laughs> so full of character, and, you know, good combos. Uh, three hits into his yellow attack, into the Quark 2, and then it's a meterless extender. So he can get really good combos. He also has, um, if he has um, measured the opponent with his Quark 2 grab, he can uh, <coughs> use the clone for extended combos and get really good damage that way. But he can also use the um, clone, because a lot of people are probably going to be using characters like 100% uh, Deku, or characters that have really annoying moves, maybe like Kami. So he can use, like, their annoying attacks, like, maybe full 100% Deku's red attack. Like, if he does a red attack, he can make them do that, and then, you know, it it's, like, a perfect example of using your opponent's strengths against them, like, in the most literal sense, because he's literally using them. But yeah, and, or he can use Kami's, like, um, he can extend his combos pretty well if he does, like, three hits into Clone Summon, if he's against Kami, and then he does, like, Kami's, um combo extending string with her quirk 2, then he can extend combos from using her, and yeah, he's, uh, I, with a cr clone you can be really creative and use, like, the opponent's strengths against them, which I find really fun, and, but he, he does struggle a little bit against zoning, but not that much, because his, um, tilt quirk 1, so, yeah, I might actually even put him up a bit higher, I, he is a very strong character, um, let me put muscular, no, I, th I think he does belong around here. Um, but yeah, twice. He's he has basically everything you could want from a character. He has decent damage combos, especially since they're meterless. He has really good maneuverability using his um tilt quirk one. He can like slide along in the sky or in the ground to avoid zoning. Um, yeah, just a lot of good tools. 
Okay, Tamaki. Oof, this is a hard one. So, he's really good, but he's also like kind of not that great. <laughs> no, yeah, good good explanation, Mr. O'Brien. Okay, I'm gonna put him like uh, here. So he's very strong. He has like maybe some of the highest damage in the game. Oh, maybe a bit, maybe up here. So he has really good damage, especially if you're like even slightly close to a wall. If you do three hits into yellow attack, into his um tentacle like grab and dash cancel after that and if you can get a combo off of it he's getting huge damage and after his regular attack string in the air like the three hits and then the one makes him bounce you can do a like a meterless dash after them and then extend your combo that way so he's getting huge damage like 12,000 damage 13,000 damage for a single dash cancel so really high damage not as much as like Gran Torino but like probably even like above 100% Deku and um like most of these S tier combos, he is has better combos than most of them, but he, oh, I, I, yeah, I do have to put him up high. He he is really good. I'll put him up with beside Nezure. That that makes sense. So his um tentacle grab is also a really good if you hold it down because it has a huge hitbox for a red attack. Um, his swordfish is also really good as a like projectile esque move. Even though it's not a projectile, you can use it to poke out the opponent in the neutral. Um. So yeah, he's he's just a really good um character when it comes to getting huge damage. Uh, he, just obviously he doesn't have great um zoning. He can struggle a bit if the opponent is really doing well at zoning them out, like with a character like Darby. Like he does have his um shell roll thing, but that doesn't really get you in very effectively. Uh, so yeah, he can struggle a little bit on that basis. But other than that, he's a very strong character. Um. And all of his moves are kind of, like, good, but he doesn't have anything that's ridiculously overpowered, except for his really high damage. Okay, ooh, Todoroki. I'm gonna put him in uh, high A plus tier. I really like playing as this character. I personally believe he's very strong, but he does definitely... Actually, no, what? I'm gonna put him up in S tier, because I... <laughs> I don't know if there's a lot of characters in S tier, but that's that's just how I feel about it. There's a lot of characters that are really strong. So, <coughs> sorry. Todoroki has just a lot of things. So he has decent damage, he has average damage, um, good combos with his ice moves and stuff. And you can extend them to make them like all on the ground or in the air, you know, fire and ice. He has his charged quirk one now, which can give him meterless, um, pretty high meterless damage. But one of the best things about Todoroki, in my opinion, is his setup and Oki game. So I, if he just ends a combo in like three hits into his Quirk 2 and then Quirk 1 ice moves, the opponent just falls onto the ground. And because they're on the ground for so um a long time, he has the Oki frames in order to put up his Quirk 1 or his Quirk 2 and then Quirk 1 because they can cancel into each other. And then he's put all this ice up where the opponent is going to wake up into. So they either have to like... I don't know, like, you can sometimes t uh, get the right angle of, like, wake up. Like, if you wake up forwards or, like, in the right angle forwards, you don't get hit by the ice. But basically, you just have to block against Todoroki if he knocks you down and has put up the ice. And if you block the ice, because they hit, like, only if you slightly move, he so you can't do anything except block. And obviously, if you're just standing there blocking, he's guaranteed to get his red attack, and then he gets to get in, go in for a new combo. So he has really good Oki setups with his ice moves, and I really do... Um, like using those. It's really fun. And um, he also just has a really good zoning and space control, as I'm sure you know. With his um, held Quirk 1, he can launch ice at the opponent if they get touched by it. They're frozen there for a while, so he gets time to either start another one or jump to the air to throw his other fireball. So he has a lot of plus frames on any of his um, things that hit. Obviously his fireball is a really good projectile. <laughs> like character Noob Todoroki's just always jump into the air and throw that constantly. It has good tracking, good damage. You know, it's just it's a good good move, and he also has really good maneuverability with his tilt quirk one, where he gets to slide on his ice because he can just <laughs> instantly be on the other side of the screen if you think you're gonna get close, and he can actually combo off of it if he sees you get hit by his slide. He can just go in for a free combo afterwards. So yeah, very good stuff from Todoroki, and also he has probably one of the best plus ultra ones in the game, like or I say one of the best, like one of the biggest, like it's huge, like. I've never 
cease to be impressed with how far that thing reaches. <laughs> and it's very easy to combo off of with almost any combo support, like Jiro, or especially Aizawa is one that I use a lot. Like, if you just do the plus ultra one and call out Aizawa, you're, like, guaranteed to get a combo, and he can get really big damage off of that. So, yeah, I think he's a very solid character. He's very, um, uh, kind of fair, except his Oki setups are a little bit overpowered, but... He's one of the fair rare characters. I think All Might is a perfect example of a fair character. See, Todoroki is a little bit overpowered, but he's still not top tier, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, now for Toga. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so I know people complain about her, and I complain about her, but it's not necessarily her that I'm complaining about. It's the people that play as her, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Oops, no, not there. Sorry, Toga. Um. So, her buttons are not that great. So, if she wants to do a meterless combo, she gets like 6,000 damage, which isn't that great. She does have, um, if you do, like, lab with Toka, like I have, and you can watch my breakdown for a lot of interesting tactics with her. She has, like, interesting, like, gimmicky, like, resets and loops in the air, and to, like, make her do a lot of damage, but some of them, are, like, aren't guaranteed. Like, some of them she can get, like, um, uh... If it's the loop off of, like, um, recovery from the Zilquark 2, or if it's... Oh, what's that other one? I don't exactly remember. But she can get good damage, like, meterless, and obviously as a Zona character, she has good projectiles, you know, her knives, she so can charge up, and the, like... Um, what are they, like, throwable needles, where she, like, sucks the blood, have crazy good tracking. Obviously they're a bit worse than the last game, but they're still... Still really good projectiles. And um, one of my favorite things about Toga is her... When she does hit you with the needles, she can transform and use the opponent's supports. And I think that's a really fun concept, being able to like use all of those things on your opponent. And she kind of goes like crazy, and you can do red attacks and call out so many supports. Or do good combos using their supports, because it doesn't count, and they can't use their supports to break it. So, yeah. I think she's a strong character. I think maybe I can put her a bit higher, maybe like up near um, Endeavor. So she's strong, but she's definitely not as ridiculous as she was in the previous game. But um, yeah, I think she's pretty good. You know, a lot, she has uh, quite a few yellow attacks that she can do in the air or on the ground. She can get good damage if you know what you're doing, like watch my breakdown or combo video, and that she has pretty high damaging combos and resets if you know how to use her moveset correctly. And... She's just overall, like, a pretty fine character. She's a good guard break, good buttons, but, um, yeah, I think she's flawed in her damage, and that she's just not too overpowered. Like, if you know how to deal with zoning, she's not that threatening. Now, oh no, this is a sad one. So now we are Tokoyami. Um, I don't know whether to put him into A or B tier. I feel like, unfortunately, uh... No, I'm going to put him into A tier, because I have belief in Tokuyami. I believe in him. So, I've done a breakdown on all of these characters, and Tokuyami is one that it took me quite a, a long time to do, because he's quite a complex character, and he's not that strong, but he's that's also because he's so unique, and it's almost feels like he's playing a completely different game to the rest of the characters. Like, especially when he's in regular state, where um his Dark Shadow acts independently of him with his moves, like his uh, Tilt Quirk 1. Dark Shadow just goes out and punches him, and Tokuyami can still be, like, running around, or his yellow attack. Um, Tokuyami comes in, I mean, uh, Dark Shadow goes out and, like, does a slam punch on the opponent, while Tokuyami can still be, like, running around and doing whatever. Um, so it's really, um, interesting game plan, but he is just slightly flawed in that his damage, even though he has all these really cool, like, fancy combos, like, with the double air hits, like, the, um, from his, like, single air kick in the air, like, doing that twice into his Quirk 2, and then doing, like, two air kicks into his Quirk, um, 1, and then do, like, because he's in the combined state, then two, two hits into the Tilt Quirk 1, and then he does get good damage that way, but even with those combos that can be a little bit hard to execute, like, he's pretty hard execution combo character, um, he doesn't get that great damage off of them, even though they look really fancy and are a ton of hits. So I feel like if you buffed his damage, he would probably be one of the highest characters in the game, because he really isn't that bad in any other sense. Like, I'm actually kind of tempted, just for the lols, to put him up in A-plus tier, because I really do think he's a really strong character. Like, he is good guard break, like, it, some of his moves are kind of slow, like his Quirk 2, like, where it 
TikTok Shadow goes out and punches. Um, that's a really good move uh, for breaking their like guard, and it, obviously his plus ultra one is also really good um, for like y using his pressure and stuff. But yeah, I feel like if you just buffed his damage, he still is not an overpowered character because you really have to think like every time you use a dark shadow, he can't block because he requires dark shadow to block. But I think he's really unique. Like, and when he does his um held tilt quirk to grab, dark shadow grabs him, and then he um Tokuyami can still run around and like combo off of it. So he's really unique and fun to play. But you really have to um be strategic and like know how his move set works. Like know that if I do the yellow attack, I can run around like behind their projectile throw my yellow attack out, like, dodge whatever they're gonna do, and get a combo off of it, but you have to think through just how his game plan works. So I think that's what makes him low tier, because he's just a hard character to use, and the reward isn't as great as some other characters. Okay, and the final one for the tier list, Uraraka. And, um, I'm sorry everyone, I'm gonna put her into, okay, no, no not, not S plus tier, but I think she is... High S tier. Now this may surprise some people for many reasons. Um, I'm gonna actually move these two around. Okay, sorry. Let's talk about <laughs> Uraraka. So, um, if you don't know, she has really good damage combos. If so, if you do two, uh, three hits and cancel like the last part of her combo into the Rock Lift Quirk Two. So, um, attack, 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 Quirk Two, Quirk One, and before the last hit of her Quirk One string, so the fifth hit of the Pillar Rush. You would do a dash cancel, the opponent is um, still airborne, and you can still combo her from it. And then you do um, two attacks into her yellow attack, and her yellow attack is really strong because it's a um, meterless combo extender, <laughs> like, which is pretty strong, and it's a yellow attack. And then she can just jump into the air and then do whatever air extension. And then from that single dash cancel combo, she's getting like 12,000 damage, which is pretty crazy. Um, yeah, and she has really good guard pressure from using like cancelling into like few attacks into the um, quirk 2 and you can do two quirk 2s if they think you're going to cancel because you can cancel the quirk 2 into her quirk 1 so if you do like two hits into like two of her quirk 2s and then cancel the second one into the quirk 1 that's almost guaranteed to break their guard in like that one go just because you mix them up slightly on block and she just had like overall has a really good move set she has um a new way to look, you know, the rocks that she lifts up with her tilt quirk one, she can kick them at the opponent, so she has a faster projectile um, that's better than doing the, uh, like, pillar spin in order to hit them. So, yeah, she, I don't know, she's just a really good character. She has a lot of great air resets, so if she does, like, um, if she's in the air and she, she does four hits and cancels before the last hit of the combo into a rock lift, the opponent's left in the air, and then you can just get more attacks afterward. A lot of the time the opponent doesn't expect it, and you can extend your combo a bit more to get more damage, even though it's not real, so it's kind of like a reset situation. And she also gets really good damage if you have um, Suyu or Jiro on your team. If you have both of them, you can get huge damage using her plus ultra one. But um, like even if you just have Suyu, like if you do it for her plus ultra one, you can combo over it super easily. And because Suyu isn't um, usually a combo support, uh, when uh, she is used in a combo, she comes back really quickly because she doesn't have a long recharge time, so it's almost like you didn't even use a support to extend the combo, so it's just a single plus ultra combo she gets like 16,000 damage from. It's, it's so ridiculous, and and she also has really high meterless damage, but thanks to her um, uh, yellow attack, so like two hits into her yellow attack, and then she can just jump into the air and do an air extension. And yeah, she just has, like, moves for any situation. She can um, do good mix-ups with thanks to her Tilt Quirk 2. And if you do, like, two hits into the Tilt Quirk 2 and the opponent gets hit by that, you can summon up all three rocks and then jump at the opponent and then do a combo. And because you've had all three rocks up, it's going to do a lot more damage. And then, because <laughs> it's a bit like um, besmirching of the opponent, they get a bit mad that you can, like, summon all these rocks while they're still floating in the air. But yeah, she just has a lot of ways to do high damage in her combos. She can always end her combos into like, for like three hits into her tilt quirk two, into her t um, tilt attack. And that's a way she can always end her combos, even after a super long one, it does a meteor blow. So she can always get a big chunk of damage to end her combos. And yeah, she just fits any situation really well. Uh, and unlike some of the other characters that I'm saying, like, oh, if you don't have an overpowered thing, you're, like, gonna be in, like, A-plus tier. But Uraraka, she's just, like, so good all-rounder, she do does good damage, and she's just, like, 
<laughs> I know it's a biased way to make a tier list, but she's super fun to play with. And so yeah, to me, she deserves her spot in S tier. She's super fun, super all-rounder, and is, is, is great, which is obviously a requirement of being this high. So now I'm just going to quickly revise where I've put everyone and to finalize my tier list. So obviously, yeah, Grand Torino is going to be top, then 100% Deku, base Deku, and then these three. Yep, that works. Top, oh, I don't know about Aizawa at the top. Um, yeah, I might put Aizawa a little bit lower. Like, he is, like, I, when I did talk about him, he's insanely strong. But maybe just not, like, that top tier. <laughs> maybe a little bit below Darby. Um, Bakugo, yeah, I feel like these guys can be at the top. I might put Jiro a little bit higher. All of this seems pretty okay. Yeah, shoot style Deku suits there. These guys are all really strong. Like, even though even though this isn't ordered, it doesn't mean that, like, Bakugo is, like, way stronger than Mystic Compress, just because there's a lot of people in between them. Like, all of these characters in S tier are practically on, like, the same level to me. Like, they're all really strong characters that are, like, really easy to get your game plan going with. So, if I'm saying, like, what they are, like, S plus is, like... You can't lose. Because they're just so strong. S is like... They're like OP. Like they have a lot of OP stuff that they can use. Or they just have a lot of strong things that they can use against the opponent. Um, you know, they're just overall really strong characters. Uh... You know, some of them have really OP things. Uraraka doesn't really have an OP thing, but she just has really good damage, has really good, like, is an all-around just great character, which kind of makes her OP overall. And, like, some characters, you know, good meterless damage, crazy damage, <laughs> ridiculous damage, good screen control, really good meterless damage, crazy setup game, um, can be ridiculous if in the right hands, is really good meterless and screen control, like, huge damage combos, so yeah, they all have, like, you know, are in a way OP and are really pretty crazy strong characters. A plus is, um, um, I'll say, like, really strong. So, like, they are really good characters, they have great tools, and, like, there's nothing wrong with them. They're just not as overpowered as other characters above them. Um, a, I would say, is great, but takes effort. And B tier, I would say, um, has exploits, but are... Uh, overall weaker. So like Seiji has his Tilt Quirk 2 exploit and you know Domu can be really annoying with his charging moves and like his like launching himself at you stuff. So like and he has really good guard pressure. So they have their ex exploits but overall they're weak. So basically every character in the game is in some way overpowered and really strong but you know some are just better at being <laughs> and crazy overpowered than others. And um, yeah, I think that is my definitive, totally, this is the official tier list for My Hero 1's Justice 2, definitely not my opinion, this is admitted by Bandai Namco, this is legit, people are definitely not going to leave hate comments about me putting characters in weird positions, like muscular and S tier, or, <laughs> but um, yeah, if you've listened this far, like, Congratulations, you've listened to like two hours of me talking. I don't think anyone could do that. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I hope, uh, if you don't agree with my opinion, leave your comment below. Um, it's probably too late to be saying this stuff, but you know, like, leave a like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. And I hope you enjoyed the video, and yeah, have a good day. <laughs>